We're around a month into our shelter in place quarantine in the United States due to the current situation going on right now with COVID. I hope that all of you are safe. A lot of us preppers have made various preparedness plans long before this for an event like this. And I think we got some things right and then some things in retrospective, in hindsight, which is 2020, we'd probably make some adjustments to our preparedness plans. So what I wanted to do for this video was talk about before COVID and after COVID. I think there's definitely gonna be a split in the timeline with the things that we thought beforehand and then after going through a situation like this, like a quarantine, shelter in place, we would probably make some adjustments. So we're gonna talk about those various preparedness plans and again, we're just a month into it right now, so maybe three months from now it would be completely different. But right now, let's take a look at one month in on before COVID and after COVID and how we would adjust our preparedness plans. Let's get started. If you happen to stumble upon this video and you're new to this channel, I'd like to welcome you. My name is Cliff, otherwise known as the Urban Prepper, and I cover various emergency preparedness topics. I've been cranking out these videos for around a decade now. So if you like practical, level-headed preparedness planning that's family-friendly, you might like some of my videos. So for this particular video, I just made a quick little one-page outline that I'm going to be going over, so I don't have a script or anything like that. So if I stumble upon my words, please don't hold that against me. So let's get started now with this video of before and after COVID. Before COVID, I think a lot of us preppers were very into the topic of bugging out. So having a bug out bag or a 72 hour emergency backpack that we would have on hand just in case we needed to evacuate in an emergency situation, we'd have enough supplies to last us for 72 hours. I basically built my whole channel on my urban bug out bag and it was a long series. I'm still doing more series on it. I think after COVID though, I think the topic of bugging in is gonna be more important moving forward. Right now, we have, no one's really bugged out of their homes, I don't think. If we did, we'd be already out of our supplies that are in our bug out bag after a month into it. So I think that after COVID, I think that it's gonna be more popular to really start thinking about planning from a bug in approach. In your home or your apartment or your RV or wherever, you wanna have your core set of supplies there. You could store a lot more supplies in some kind of shelter than you can in a backpack. So I think moving forward, we're us as preppers is probably going to lean more towards bugging in if at all possible and just having that bug out bag be less of a priority than bugging in and just for emergency purposes where you have to evacuate due to something like an earthquake or a fire but put more emphasis in the to the whole bug in approach i think that's going to be something that's going to be more popular moving forward on my channel, I use a concept called the color of prepping for organizing all of my preparedness items. So I have them all organized into various categories. I sometimes call them modules. We have food, water, shelter, and so on. And I have them color coordinated based off of a system that I call the color of prepping, which basically I have a color associated to each one of those categories. So for example, water is associated with the color blue. When you see blue, you think water. With uh, first aid, for example, that's associated with the color red. When you see red, that associates with first aid and so on and we have that basically categorized for every single category with a, a matching color coordination so before COVID, I think some of those categories were cooler than others. For example, the tools category is usually the most popular one because that's where you have all the fancy cool prepper stuff like uh, guns and knives, basically. You have your cool uh, firearms and folding knives and anything that's real tactical that's a cool tool, axes, things like that, and maybe even flashlights, for example, and everyone has multiple flashlights. Although I think after COVID has gone, at least a month into it, I think that there's other categories that have really been a lot more needed in this situation situation than the tools. For example, I haven't gotten any kind of knife fight yet or a gun fight, although we're only a month in right now, so who knows. And I actually haven't even used uh, my hardcore flashlights either. So after COVID, I think the more important categories, at least from what I've seen, is one, food. So food is the more important. Also, the, the surprising one probably is the hygiene one. I have a whole category dedicated to hygiene and sanitation type items. So I think that like toilet paper and disinfectants and cleaning supplies and soap and all of those things, I think they're going to be a lot more important after this whole COVID situation is said and done. I think a lot more people will probably want to overemphasize and get more supplies for that when they're back available again. The other category that I think is gonna be a lot more important moving forward is on that whole personal side. So I have pink for personal, and that's also miscellaneous, entertainment, and games like that. I think the whole morale boosters is really important. Even a month in, a lot of us are starting to get stir crazy. My kids are stir crazy. People are getting a little antsy just being sheltered in place. And so I think I would put more emphasis towards the entertainment and morale booster items. So having things like board games. I did a video on board games. I think I could have done even more than on that. And then other additional 
morale items, whether it be books, uh, anything that would help boost your morale, keep your mind positive during a situation like this when you're bunkering in place. Now, there are some other important categories that we haven't had to leverage quite yet. Again, we're only a month into this as far as here in the United States. So water is a key category. We So far, the water has been running just fine. We haven't had to worry about that yet. Right now, comms is working okay. So we're all able to use our cell phones. We're all on the internet. You're watching this video. People are playing on their Xbox and so on. But maybe 90 days later, maybe comms is going to become an issue. So, so far, those ones haven't had to be leveraged quite yet. Let's deep dive into the topic of food now. So before COVID, I think that all of us preppers were very into the topic of long-term food storage. So having rice and beans in the Mylar bags in five gallon buckets, having our MREs and having our mountain house and legacy food storage and thrive food storage, you name it, there's a whole bunch of companies that make long-term food storage. So far, I haven't had to use any of those long-term food storages because we've been relying more on our pantry preps. For those long-term food storages, I think that us preppers were probably focusing a lot more on our servings, how many servings we could get. While we're going through the shelter in place, at least with my family, what we're really doing is having our normal food. We're not switching over to a long-term food storage just quite yet as far as that kind of diet. I think our stomachs would have a hard time adjusting to that as well. So we've been trying to leverage a lot more of the regular type of food and we're kind of grazing during the day and then having one big family meal at a normal family meal time. I think that's very important with the current situation going on right now with in terms of morale boosters and stuff. Having that family dinner where you're all at the table and you're having a meal with your family. We've had our, my in-laws come over as well because we're the only people that are really associating with, with each other right now. We're not really going out beyond that. But I think it's really important to have that big family dinner with each other at the end of the day. I think you could get by with grazing on the various snacks and stuff for your, from your pantry preps rather than dipping into an MRE, at least at this point. So I think after COVID, what I would probably do is stop thinking less on uh, individual servings and I'm going to think about how many large family dinners could I make. I think it would probably be a good goal to have to be able to make 100 family dinners where you could all sit at the table with your family plus maybe one or two people that might need to have some food and be able to serve them a nice meal. I think that would be good for morale purposes. I also think it would be a better diet. You wouldn't have to adjust to eating rice and beans out of Mylar bags, for example. So try to have as many family meals as possible for that it could be sit down and just hopefully help boost the morale. So I think after COVID, that's going to be something that's going to be a lot more popular. I've been very fortunate that I've been able to work from home this entire time. So what I've been doing is really leveraging that slow cooker and planning out the meal the night before, putting it in the slow cooker in the morning, and then by the evening we're ready to go with the dinner. And I think if we didn't have that slow cooker, say if there wasn't electricity, I'd probably be doing the same thing with the Dutch oven outside, which could kind of act as a slow cooker. Before COVID happened, I think a lot of us underestimated the need for various hygiene items. So hygiene, sanitation, household cleaning supplies, things like that. It just wasn't as flashy as some of the cooler items like knives and flashlights, for example. After COVID though, I think a lot of us are gonna remember this, that hey, we really need to have a lot of toilet paper. We need to have a lot of paper towels. We need to have bleach. We need to have Clorox wipes. We need rubbing alcohol. We need various things for disinfecting, for killing any kind of germs, bacteria, and viruses. I think that's gonna be a lot more important for people moving forward and they're going to remember the situation and want to make sure that they always have a good set of supplies of these various items. Another item that us preppers might want to look into getting moving forward in hindsight again is something called Allegro 5003-U. It's a respirator cleaning solution that's specifically designed for killing things like viruses such as the coronavirus. And it's something that I learned about from Roman, the owner and founder of Mira Safety who makes awesome gas masks and filters. And this is something that he uses for cleaning anything that's coming into the home, whether that be a gas mask, a respirator, even packages from Amazon. It's getting a spray down with this cleaning solution which you basically just have to add to water. It comes in a gallon jug for around $40 for a jug or so. And one jug will last you a long time because you're basically adding just a few ounces of it into water. And basically what you want to do is spray down anything with this particular thing. Again, it's not meant for skin, but for other inanimate objects like packages, cardboard, and things like that. You could spray it down, let it dry, and it'll kill any kind of virus then. And that's what it's specifically designed for because it's designed for respirator masks. So I'll put a link in the description box for if you're interested in Allegro 5003-U. It's specifically designed for respirators to kill viruses. 
Now let's move on to the topic of first aid. So I think before COVID, a lot of us were focusing on trauma-related first aid items. So far, I don't think we've had to leverage those at least quite yet. Again, we're just one month into the shelter in place, maybe 90 days in, it'll be a different story. But one area of first aid or medical that I think has been uh, something that we should probably focus on is on the prescription medication side. So a lot of us take various prescription medications and I think most people probably have a 30-day supply in their bottle and they have to refill it once a month. I think moving forward, most people are probably going to want to switch over to at least a 90-day supply, if not more. I have to take various prescription medications for my heart. I have congestive heart failure due to the chemotherapy that I had when I had cancer around 20 years ago. It kind of messed up my heart, so I rely on some of these prescription medications to keep me going. And so I worked out something with my doctor to say, I can't just have a 30-day supply. I need to have a much longer supply. So we were able to get a 90-day supply in addition to some backups to that. So I was able to build up more of like a six to 12 month supply of the prescription medications for my heart. So after COVID, I think we're all gonna learn that, A, we can't really rely on always being able to get our prescription medications refilled. We're gonna to wanna to have a larger supply. And so that's one before and after with regard to pharmacy items. While we're on the topic of pills, I think a lot of us preppers, and rightfully so, we're focusing on pills such as painkillers, aspirin, Tylenol, the Advil, you name it. Also things like anti-diarrhea, maybe anti-allergy, and pills related to that, so those basic set of supplies. I think after COVID, I think a lot of us are gonna to wanna to make sure that we have a better supply of immune system supplements. So things like zinc, oil of oregano, olive leaf, elderberry, vitamin C. I recently did a video of the, all the various immune system supplements that you could be using. A lot of people are immune system compromised and we wanna make sure that we're boosting our immune system. So I think after this is all said and done, I think all of us are probably gonna to wanna to put a little bit more emphasis towards those immune system supplements during a time like this. Now let's talk about the category of clothing. So before COVID, I think a lot of us preppers were focusing on the whole gray man concept and being able to blend into your environment. So having clothing items that would allow you to kind of blend in with other people in whatever region or society that you're in. And so we're getting some hiking type stuff over at REI or maybe some military style clothing, anything that would allow you to blend in as far as following the whole gray man concept. After COVID, I think a more important clothing item has been the whole concept of PPE. So having that personal protective equipment items that you could wear on you. I think that's been very important. We've all seen it. There's been shortages of masks and things like that. So N95 respirator masks have been basically impossible to find nowadays because they're in great need for frontliners. So people at the hospital, for example, they need to have these masks and there's not enough supply of them. And so a lot of people that have had thousands of these masks have been donating them to those frontline workers, which I think is awesome. I think in hindsight, let's say this is all said and done and the supply chain is restocked, for example, I think a lot of us are gonna wanna make sure that we have an ample supply of masks for ourselves. I think a good number probably to aim for, let's say if the supply is, back again it's probably a hundred per person so that would be a three month supply so 90 and then you would have an additional 10 percent to be able to give out to other people so i think that'd probably be a good number so you'd want to have a hundred per person as a good goal i think that would be good and then with regard to the nitrile gloves that have also been very important during this we want to protect our hands and we want to protect our face and we don't want to rub our eyes for example i think for the nitrile gloves i think moving forward after this is all said and done i think a lot of us will probably want to aim for having around 200 nitrile gloves per person. I think that'd probably be a good count to have. That would still allow you to give some away too, and you're gonna to have to have them in various sizes. I have large hands, for example, so I use extra large nitrile gloves. My wife uses medium size, and my kids have a different size as well. I think that's a good number to have in hindsight after this is all said and done. So a lot of us preppers have made investments towards getting full face gas masks just in case. So like ones made from mirror safety, for example, the CM6M, in addition to some of the virus filters like the P3 Particle Max virus filters. So, so far, I, th I don't think most people have been going out with full face gas masks. Maybe it gives off the wrong impression, for example. I think a lot of people are going more with the N95 style or the surgical masks, and at the most, they'll have a half face respirator mask. I think uh, moving forward, I think a lot more people are gonna wanna make sure that they have those half face ones because I think as far as the overall impression that you're giving if people could see your eyes for example I think that gives off a different impression than if your full face is covered so I think those half mask face masks are going to be a lot more popular when this is all said and done and everyone's going to want to make sure that they have one with an ample supply of refills for the filters so moving forward 
right, again, we're only a month into it, so maybe the full face mask will have to be leveraged and I'll have to shave my beard, for example. Uh, but I think moving forward, a lot more people are gonna wanna make sure that they probably have that half face mask, which I think is a little bit more socially accepted, at least now. Now let's move on to the category of personal. So I have that in the color pink. Personal stands for things that are specific to you, maybe some miscellaneous items, entertainment items, family photos, things like that. So prior to COVID, I think a lot of us preppers were putting emphasis, and I think this was good, into backing up our important documents. So having backup documents to medical records and certificates and your home and things like that. We were backing those up and putting those on a flash drive. I, think, I still think that was good, although we haven't had to leverage it quite yet. Something that we have had to leverage even already, and it's probably a little sooner than I thought, is the whole morale entertainment portion of the personal items. I did a video around a year and a half ago or so with regard to having board games and things like that. I think I could have done even more than that for the entertainment because a lot of us are starting to get stir crazy. We're locked up in our homes. We haven't been here that much. Prior to that, we're oftentimes going to work and running around and going to bars or wherever. Now we're sheltering a place and I think that whole sanity is coming into play. So I think after COVID, we're gonna to have to put a greater emphasis towards entertainment and morale items. A few years back, I did a video with regard to bartering items and things that people would want to trade for that would retain their value even in an emergency situation. And alcohol was one of those. I think looking back now, I think I could have done even more with regard to stockpiling various boozes and things like that. During the Great Depression, people were it was very stressful, probably similar to this. And sometimes a nice glass of bourbon at the end of the day would help relieve some of the anxiety and stress. I mean, we're watching the news, everyone's getting stressed out. My wife, for example, has been having anxiety problems where she's staying up real late at night because her mind's racing with all the various things. I think having a, a glass of booze, for example, will help calm the nerves a little bit. And I think that's something that's gonna be universal, whether we're a month into this situation right now, maybe even 90 days, I think it's still gonna have its value. So that's something that looking back at it now, in hindsight, I think we could do even more with stockpiling those kind of anti-anxiety type items that we could have for those type of situations. There's other things I'm sure that you could think of uh, for our family, maybe like a, having a nice wine rack, for example, or having a nice selection of bourbons would be good. Things like that I think would be important moving forward. That's gonna do it for this video featuring COVID-19 before and after. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. Again, this was just one month after sheltering in place. So it's in the very early stages of things. I think this is a topic that we could probably look into down the road, maybe at the 90 day mark or the two month mark. And we're gonna to wanna to just kind of reevaluate things, do a retrospective, and then make changes to our emergency preparedness plans. I don't think it's good to just have a static emergency preparedness plan that isn't adapting based off of what you're finding out. So I found that I found that some things that I planned have worked, some things could probably use some adjustments, some things I flat out need to improve on greatly. And I think a lot of us probably are in similar situations. So during this time, I think it's important to write down the things that are your thoughts during this. Some of the stuff that you'd like to change when this is all said and done, hopefully this goes away, hopefully we're all staying safe and we're able to ride this one out. So leave your comments below in the comments section regarding COVID-19 before and after with regard to your personal planning. So what are the things that you found that didn't really work or you haven't really used yet versus the things that you really wish you would have improved upon? And in retrospective, in hindsight, which is 2020, you would probably make those adjustments moving forward. Leave those comments below in the comments section. And again, I think this is something that we should reevaluate as we continue to go through this journey during this storm. And we should be making our improvements to our emergency preparedness plannings. So again, and we'll take another look at this down the road. I hope that everyone's staying safe. Again, leave your comments below in the comments section and see you guys next time. Take care.